Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. I hope you're ready because we will start right now. Les démonstratifs. Les démonstratifs, so we'll see two types of demonstratifs. The first one will be adjectif, démonstratif, okay? And then the second one will be pronom démonstratif. All right, so let's start. So we'll see for the adjective demonstratif, the masculine singular form, feminine singular form, masculine plural form, and then feminine plural form. Okay? Masculin singulier, féminin singulier, masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. So let's see how they are. So when we talk about les démonstratifs, technically it would be translated in English like this. Okay? Uh, but then, of course, we've got in French the difference between the masculine and the feminine form, and then masculine plural and feminine plural. Okay, so we'll see them now. Yeah. The first one, so for the masculine, so this, this, okay, adjective will be translated in French with ce, so it's the basic form, or set, okay? So you will have to use this second option here, this set, when you will have a name or a noun after, that will start whether with a vowel or then with H plus a vowel. Okay, remember this H letter in French is not really pronounced, okay? So it does it does indicate to you that when, when you get a, a word starting with a, the sound of a vowel, then you will have to use this set adjective, okay? And then feminine form is set like that so it's quite interesting because if you listen carefully the masculine form here set and the feminine form here set you write them differently but then you pronounce them the same way all right for the plural form so masculine plural it would be se okay and then feminine plural good news it's the same so we've got one form here, se, and the option set, when you get a noun starting with a vowel after, and then set, feminine form, and for the plural, you get only one form, okay, and it's se, okay, remember, open, se, 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 okay. One example, ce livre, so this book, okay, livre is book, uh, here, livre is masculine, so you will have to use the se, okay? And then it doesn't start with the sound of a vowel, so it's the basic se. This book, ce livre. And now we've got ordinateur. Ordinateur is a masculine word, means computer, okay? But then if you look carefully, it starts with o, okay, a vowel. So this se ordinateur wouldn't be possible, so we've got to use the second option, as we saw previously, so it's set, written like that, okay? Set ordinateur, this computer. Third possibility here, we've got homme, man, okay? Uh, but then O is here, we've got this H letter, remember H is not pronounced, Okay, so you get the sound of O at the beginning of this word, okay? Setum, so that's the reason why you will have to use the set. So it's masculine, but still setum. So now, feminine word, femme, woman. No problem about that because we've got only one option for this at the feminine form, and it's set, written like that. Set femme. Same thing here, if you've got a word like organisation, well, it's the same in English. So it starts with a vowel, but it doesn't change anything for the feminine uh, demonstratif here, okay? Set organisation, set organisation. And then plural, so whether it's masculine, so we've got friends here at the masculine form, so masculine plural, and then friends here at the feminine plural form, okay? But then the 
adjectif démonstratif, here, as you can see, will be the same. Ses amis, ses amis. All right? And it's quite funny in a way because if you only listen to these two things, here, ses amis, and then ses amis, you don't have really any phonetical um, information regarding the fact whether it's masculine or feminine. That's the way it is. Sorry about that. But, so let's continue now with uh, the demonstrative. So we'll see now uh, the pronouns. Okay, so same thing. We'll see the masculin singulier, then féminin singulier, then masculin pluriel, and then féminin pluriel. Okay, so pronouns. Okay, so it does mean that you will have to use these pronouns instead of the name. Okay, so for the masculine form, we will have celui-ci and then celui-là. Okay, so we'll see the difference of use, but then celui-ci, celui-là. Uh, in English, it would be directly translated as this one. Okay, so you don't want to repeat uh, the name or uh, the thing that was previously stated, so you use this, this one, okay? In English, it's easier. In French, it's a bit more tricky because we will have this celui, okay? And then si and la. So you'll see that normally si is coming first and then la is coming next, okay? Celui-ci, celui-là. This one, all right? Same thing with the, the feminine form. Celle-ci, celle-là. All right? And then for the Masculine plural, ceci, okay, remember final X is not pronounced, so you get the sound ce, ceci, and then cela, all right, feminine plural, celle-ci, okay, don't pronounce the final S, celle-ci, celle-là, all right, so let's see a few examples now, so if you ask a question, quel est mon livre, okay, what is my book or which one is my book, all right? And then the answer could be Votre livre, your book, c'est celui-ci, this one, okay? Votre livre, c'est celui-ci, okay? And then normally when you talk or when you say that, you tend to indicate that with your finger as well. So you point the book. Votre livre, c'est Celui-ci. Où est ma place? Where is my seat? Où est ma place? C'est celle-là. Okay. Same thing. You tend to point it at the same time. Okay. C'est celle-là. All right. So you get to remember that we will have the difference between the masculine, the feminine. Okay. So singular and plural and then we'll have the difference between this c okay the first option the nearest one okay and then this la second option so it's not the nearest one okay. la description avec c so let's start so if you want to use this c option to make a description so say technically would be directly translated as, as it is or this is okay but then in french you will have to add after that the adjective but the adjective should be all the time at the masculine form okay so remember if you want to describe something okay you can use this say and that's really, you know, a common way to, to, to describe things. Okay, it is, this is, but then remember, the adjective that will come after should be at the masculine form. Okay, so we'll see a few examples now. And the first one would be the option to, to uh, describe uh, un lieu, a place. Okay, so let's see. Now, c'est chaud. Okay, it is hot. Warm, huh? could be an option as well. C'est chaud, it's warm, okay? C'est froid, cold. It is cold. C'est beau, beau is beautiful, 
okay? And then say tranquille, quiet, okay? So what you can see here is that we've got adjectives like chaud, froid, beau, and then tranquille. They are all at the masculine form, okay? Even if, I mean, the place uh, would be feminine and you want to describe it, remember that it should be all the time at the masculine form, okay? Let's see another example. So if you want to describe a situation, for instance, okay? It would be an option. So, ideal, ideal, c'est ideal. Formidable, c'est formidable. C'est parfait. So it's perfect. And then c'est injuste, injuste, the opposite is of uh, ju juste, okay? And it's not fair, unfair, okay? So c'est idéal, c'est formidable, c'est parfait, c'est injuste. Same thing here, okay? Remember that all these adjectives are at the feminine form, okay? Let's continue now and see. So it could be uh, for an object as well. So you could describe an object, an objet. So let's see now. C'est cher. Cher is expensive. C'est cher. C'est utile. Utile, useful. C'est beau. Beautiful. C'est adapté. Adapted. Okay? C'est cher. C'est utile. C'est beau. C'est adapté. Remember, all these adjectives are at the feminine oh uh, sorry the masculine form i'm getting tired now all right so at the masculine form like i did say previously okay so let's see now another option so if you want to describe a dish okay you're eating and you want to describe a dish un plat okay so c'est très bon okay très is very and then bon is good okay c'est très bon c'est bon marché Beau bon marché, it's actually quite interesting. I mean, this adjective here, so it's a composed adjective, and it means cheap, okay? C'est bon marché. C'est salé. So remember, it's quite important because we've got the same adjective here without the accent. So if you don't put the accent, it means dirty, and then you pronounce it sale, but in that case here, Okay, you put the accent and it's quite important because in that case it means salted, okay? Salé, okay? C'est salé. C'est délicieux. C'est délicieux, okay? And then same thing here, if you look all these adjectives, they are at the masculine form, okay? So, the second option would be to put this structure at the negative form, which is not that difficult because technically you just keep, well, your structure, you just add as usual the first n and then pa before and after the verb, okay? Then, same thing here, you will put this adjective at the masculine form, okay? So we will basically just see one more time all the examples we had previously, but then at the negative form. So, if you want to describe a place, ce n'est pas chaud, ce n'est pas froid, ce n'est pas beau, ce n'est pas tranquille. Situation, ce n'est pas idéal, ce n'est pas formidable. Ce n'est pas parfait. Ce n'est pas injuste. An object. Ce n'est pas cher. Ce n'est pas utile. Ce n'est pas beau. Ce n'est pas adapté. And then a dish. Ce n'est pas très bon. Ce n'est pas bon marché. Ce n'est pas salé. Ce n'est pas délicieux. La salle de séjour. So let's start now. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. 
So remember, it's a bit tricky, this word. Fauteuil. Deuil. Fauteuil. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Ok, one more time. Le rideau. Le fauteuil. Le coussin. La cheminée. La télévision. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. Ok, one more time. Le lecteur DVD. Le lecteur de CD. La table basse. Le lustre. Le cendrier. Le sol. La table. Le tapis. Le canapé. La bibliothèque. One more time. Le sol. La table. Le tapis. Remember final S not pronounced. Le tapis. Le canapé. La bibliothèque. La Cuisine. So in the previous lesson we were in the la salle de séjour and now we're still in the house but it's la cuisine. So let's discover what we have. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier. L'étagère. Ok, so let's repeat them. La cuisine. Le congélateur. Le réfrigérateur. Le frigo. L'évier. L'étagère. L'égouttoir. L'armoire murale. Le four. La cuisinière. Le lave-vaisselle. Ok, let's see them one more time. L'égouttoir. L'armoire murale. Le four. La cuisinière. Le lave-vaisselle. Le chauffe-eau. La théière. La cafetière. La louche. L'entonnoir. Ok, let's see them one more time. Le chauffe-eau. La théière, la cafetière, la louche, l'entonnoir, le décapsuleur, l'ouvre-boîte, le tire-bouchon, le presse-citron. La passoire. Alright, let's repeat them together. Le décapsuleur. L'ouvre-boîte. Le tire-bouchon. Le presse-citron. La passoire. La râpe. Le couteau. Le casse-noix. Le hachoir. 
le rouleau à pâtisserie. Ok, let's see them. La râpe, le couteau, le casse-noix, le hachoir, le rouleau à pâtisserie. Les fruits et légumes, so fruits and vegetables. So I hope you're ready because we are starting right now. Les fruits. L'orange. So I did put this little F just to indicate you that it's feminine. Okay? L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. Okay? So, les fruits. L'orange. La pomme. La pêche. Le melon. L'ananas. Le pamplemousse. La pastèque. La banane. La figue. Alright. L'ananas. Le pamplemousse. La pastèque. La banane. La figue. La prune. La mandarine. Le citron. L'abricot. La cerise. La prune. La mandarine. Le citron. L'abricot. So by the way, I didn't put it, but it's masculine, just for your information. La cerise. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. La poire. Le raisin. Le marron. La date. Les baies. La fraise. La framboise. La groseille à macro. La groseille rouge. I just noticed that I've been making a little mistake here. Sorry about that. Les baies. La fraise. La framboise. La groseille à macro. La groseille rouge. La myrtille. La mûre des marais. La canneberge. Le cassis. L'airelle rouge. La myrtille. La mûre des marais. La canneberge. Le cassis, l'airelle rouge, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte, la courgette, le haricot vert, le concombre, la salade, la carotte. L'asperge. Le navet. Le petit pois. L'ail. La lentille. L'asperge. Le navet. Le petit pois. L'ail. La lentille. Le haricot. La fève. L'artichaut. L'oignon. Le chou. Le haricot. La fève. L'artichaut. 
So for your information, artichaut is masculine. L'oignon, same thing for oignon, is masculine, it's masculine. Le chou. La tomate. Le chou-fleur. La pomme de terre. Le poivron. L'aubergine. La tomate. Le chou-fleur, la pomme de terre, le poivron, l'aubergine. For your information, aubergine is a feminine word. L'épinard, le fenouil, le champignon. L'épinard, so it's masculine, le fenouil. Le champignon. Bonjour à tous, hi everyone, and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, leçon F. And in this lesson, we'll discover together les comparatifs. So if you want to compare in French, well, this is the lesson you should definitely watch. So in this structure, in this lesson, sorry, we'll discover three type of structures. The first one, avec un nom, with a noun. Second one, avec un adjectif, with an adjective. And the last one, avec un verbe, with a verb. Okay, so if you want to compare with these structures, then we'll start with the first one, avec un nom. Okay, so if you want to compare with a noun, then remember that if you want to say more, then you will have to use this plus, de, and then here, you will put your noun, after that followed by que, than, and the rest of the structure. Okay, let's see one example. J'ai plus de chance que vous. J'ai plus de chance que vous. Okay, chance is luck. Okay, j'ai plus de chance que vous. Vous is you. Alright. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Il a plus d'amis que moi. Amis, friends. Nous, nous avons plus de livres que. Nous avons plus de livres que. Ok, so if I want to be really honest, and I will be, um, there is a strange thing in French language with this plus. Okay, because in some cases you will have to pronounce the final S and in other cases you won't. So what I would advise you to do, because uh, we are at a beginning stage, um, it would be to pronounce it each time, especially with this type of structure. So if you want to construct it followed by a noun, then in that case my advice would be pronounce it. Okay, after that, if you get the chance to go in uh, French-speaking countries or meet French-speaking persons, then you can listen to them and you will learn how to use it or not. Okay, but the first advice would be if you're using this kind of uh, structure with nouns, then pronounce it. Okay, so let's see now if you want to say as. Okay, so if you want to compare, so it would be autant de followed by the noun, then with this que, then, and you continue your structure, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Okay, so I kept exactly the same uh, sentences, just to make it more clear, okay? J'ai autant de chance que vous. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Il a autant d'amis que moi. Okay, so as usual in French, you know, you get this de here, but then if the word, you know, coming right after is starting with a vowel or h, h plus a vowel, then you should definitely take this e uh away, okay? Il a autant d'amis que moi. Nous avons autant de livres que, okay? And then same thing here, as you can see here, you get this que, okay, but then followed by a vowel, in that case, a uh, needs to go away, and then you get this que. All right. Then if you want to say less, 
it's moi in French, so no discussion about the S here. Don't pronounce it, okay? Moi, de, and then you put your noun, que, dan, and the rest of the structure. So let's see. J'ai moins de chance que vous. J'ai moins de chance que vous. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Il a moins d'amis que moi. Nous avons moins de livres que. Nous avons moins de livres que. All right? So that's it. Now let's see if you want to compare and use a structure with an adjective. Donc avec un adjectif. Okay? First structure, if you want to use this more. Okay? So you will use this plus. And in that case, you don't pronounce the S. Okay? Plus. Then you put your adjective. And after that, you put this que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay? So let's see now. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Rapide is fast. Okay? Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Fort is strong. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressé que vous. Okay? And in that case, well, you make this little link, little liaison between the two, so you hear a little bit this S. Okay? Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right? So let's see them one more time. Elle est plus rapide que moi. Il est plus fort que son frère. Nous sommes plus intéressés que vous. All right? And then, aussi, Then you put your adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay, so the same examples. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. Okay, so I'll repeat them. Elle est aussi rapide que moi. Il est aussi fort que son frère. Nous sommes aussi intéressés que vous. All right. And then, moins, same thing here, remember, we don't pronounce the final S. Then you put the adjective, que, then, and the rest of the sentence. Okay? Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. Ok, one more time. Elle est moins rapide que moi. Il est moins fort que son frère. Nous sommes moins intéressés que vous. All right. And so the last structure, if you want to compare with a verb, then, in that case, remember, plus will be with the S. So pronounce it. Plus que. Ok, let's see now. Elle parle plus que toi. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Nous voyageons plus que vous. Ok, so let's repeat them. Elle parle plus que toi. Il mange plus que son frère. Nous voyageons plus que vous. And then, autant que. Alright? So it goes like, elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons Autant que vous. Alright, so let's repeat them one more time. Elle parle autant que toi. Il mange autant que son frère. Nous voyageons autant que vous. And the last one. Moins que. Elle parle moins que toi. Il mange Moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. One more time. Elle parle moins que toi. 
il mange moins que son frère. Nous voyageons moins que vous. And this is it. Okay, the next lesson is here on YouTube slash Imagier. And then the website is here, imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. This is Unité 6, Leçon G. And in this lesson, we'll see together. Let me click. <laughs> Le passé composé of the verb faire. Faire is to do and then we'll see together the passé composé form. So we, we, we did introduce the passé composé in the unit 5, okay? But I just want to check and uh, make it clear that everything is okay for you. So we'll start with faire. It will be quite fast but still quite useful. Let's start. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Vous avez fait. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right. So to make it clear, one more time, remember that in most of the cases for the passé composé, you will have to use avoir at the present form, followed by this participe passé form. So if you're not sure how to construct that, Check uh, Unité 5 and then uh, you will see the, the, the lesson that explains everything, okay? But then we'll repeat it one more time. J'ai fait. So remember, final T is not pronounced. J'ai fait. Tu as fait. Il a fait. Elle a fait. Nous avons fait. Little link between the two. Nous avons. Nous avons fait. Same thing here. Vous avez fait. And same thing here. Ils ont. Ils ont fait. Elles ont fait. All right? So that's it. It was the verb faire at the passé composé. Really important. If that's okay with you and if it's clear, then you can continue. And the website is youtube.com slash imagier. Or then more material, imagier.net. Have a great day. Au revoir. Well, basically it's for important verbs. And this one, venir, to come. It's quite important, especially because it's a bit tricky in a way. So we'll see why. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venue. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venues. Okay, so if you remember carefully when we introduced the uh, passé composé uh, construction in the unit 5, I told you that most of the verbs uh, were constructed with avoir, but then we had the list of the verbs that requires this être verb. Venir is among them, okay, so that's the reason why you put être here at the present form, okay? And then remember that if you get to put être, then have a look at the feminine form here, you will have to add this final E, okay, feminine singular, but then for the plural form, you will have to add this S here, here, okay, and then for the feminine plural, you will have to add this E, S, all right, but then the good news, there is a good news, yes, <laughs> it's that uh, you, you don't pronounce them, so basically you get the pronunciation venu, 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 and then the same thing, venu, you don't pronounce this final E. Uh. Venu, you don't pronounce the final S. Venu, you don't pronounce it, the final S either. Same thing here, venu, and same thing here, venu, you don't pronounce a uh, S. So phonetically, you only have one way to pronounce it, but remember, if you want to write correctly, you will have to put E uh, for the feminine, S for the plural, a S for the feminine plural. Okay, let's repeat them one more time. Je suis venu. Tu es venu. Il est venu. Elle est venu. Nous sommes venus. Vous êtes venus. Ils sont venus. Elles sont venus. 
So we'll see together uh, le passé composé form of pouvoir, pouvoir, can. And then uh, we'll see how it goes at the past form, this uh, passé composé form. Okay? So, j'ai pu, tu as pu, il a pu, elle a pu, nous avons pu, vous avez pu, ils ont pu, elles ont pu. Okay, so if you remember carefully, as I said, uh, in unit 5, when I introduced this uh, passé composé form, most of the verbs are using avoir and the present form, so that's the case here. And then after that, you get to put the participe passé. Same thing, it was introduced in unit 5, so check it if you want. And then for pouvoir, it's a bit tricky because pouvoir becomes pu like that only two letters okay but then it doesn't change if you look carefully then it's always the same form okay so let's see them together j'ai pu tu as pu remember you don't pronounce the s here il a pu elle a pu nous avons pu little link little liaison between the two nous avons pu vous avez pu same thing here little liaison between the two ils ont pu same thing here Elles ont le passé composé, and the verb is attendre. Attendre is to wait, okay? And so we'll see the past form. So it's just some reviews that we are doing, uh, but they are really important. So let's see how it goes now. J'ai attendu. Tu as attendu. Il a attendu. Elle a attendu. Nous avons attendu. Vous avez attendu, ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. Alright, so if you remember, when I introduced the passé composé form, I told you that most of the verbs are using this avoir verb at the present form and then the participe passé. Okay, in that case, attendre becomes attendu at the participe passé and then that's the form you will have to add at the end and it doesn't change here. As you can see, j'ai attendu, tu as attendu, il a attendu, elle a attendu, nous avons attendu, so two liaisons here, nous avons attendu, nous avons attendu, vous avez attendu, same thing here, vous avez attendu, ok, vous avez attendu, then same thing here, ils ont attendu, ok, liaison here as well, Ils ont attendu, ok? But make it fast. Ils ont attendu, elles ont attendu. The passé composé of répondre. Répondre is to answer and it's quite useful. So let's see how it goes for the passé composé form. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu, ils ont répondu, elles ont répondu. Alright, so it's not that difficult. Keep in mind that répondre, so the infinitive form, becomes répondu at the participe passé form. Okay, so the, this form that you will have to add each time here doesn't change. You know, you don't put the mask, you don't put, sorry, the feminine form or the plural form. You just keep it like that. Okay, so let's see them one more time. J'ai répondu. Tu as répondu. Il a répondu. Elle a répondu. Nous avons répondu. Vous avez répondu. Ils ont répondu. Elles ont répondu. Okay, le passé composé, but this time it will be the verb partir. Partir is to leave. Okay, and then you will see that it goes like that. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est partie. Nous sommes partis, vous êtes partis, ils sont partis, elles sont partis. Ok? Remember, partir belongs to this group of verbs that requires to use être instead of avoir for the 
passé composé form and for that reason you will have here for example when you've got the feminine form you will have to put this final e uh, at the end of your participe passé form okay if that's plural like it is here you will have to add s okay and it's if it's feminine plural you will have to add this e uh, s at the end of your participe passé form but um when it comes to uh, phonetics, so what you will pronounce, the good news is that you won't pronounce these E, uh, S, or E, uh, S, okay? So it will go like parti, parti, and then here, same thing, parti, parti, and parti, okay? So phonetically, it's not that difficult, but then if you want to write correctly, remember to put E uh for the feminine form, S for the plural form, E, uh, S for the feminine form plural form. Okay? So let's see that together. Je suis parti. Tu es parti. Il est parti. Elle est parti. Nous sommes parti. Vous êtes parti. Ils sont parti. Elles sont parti. Okay? That's it. YouTube.com slash Imagier. Next lesson is waiting for you. And then the website is here. www.imagier.net Au revoir. Le passé composé of the verb savoir. Savoir is to know. It's quite used and quite useful. Okay? But then keep in mind that this lesson regarding passé composé is the last one. Okay? So if you're not sure how to make it, remember that in Unit 5, I did a big, big, big lesson regarding le passé composé. And then in Unit 6, few verbs were... Uh, well, it was possible to see them. Okay? But then after that... We won't see le passé composé again. All right, so let's start now. Le passé composé, savoir, goes like... J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su. Elle a su. Nous avons su. Vous avez su. Ils ont su. Elles ont su. All right. So, for the last time, in most of the cases for the verbs, we will use avoir and then we'll use the participe passé form. In that case, savoir becomes su. Okay, so that's the reason why. That's the form that you will see at the end of each forms here. Okay, and then avoir should be at the present form. All right. J'ai su. Tu as su. Il a su, elle a su, nous avons su, vous avez su, ils ont su, elles ont su. Futur, simple. So basically it's the future tense, okay? When you want to express something that you will do, let's see how we will make it in French. So we'll see the difference between the three, uh, sorry, the three groups of verbs that we get in French. The first one, first group, is ending with a air. Remember, parler, to talk, to speak. So, the idea is that in that case, for this group, you don't change anything. So, you just keep the basic form, the infinitive form, all right? And after that, you will put at the end a e for je. Okay, so this will be your ending. So you just don't touch the verb. I mean, don't touch the infinitive form. You just put at the end this ending. Okay? Second group of verbs. Finir, to finish, to end. Well, the good news is that it will behave the same way as for the first group of verbs. You don't modify anything. You just keep your infinitive form. And you will put the ending, AI, here as well. So you get, je parlerai, and then you will get, je finirai. So it's not that difficult for these two first group, okay? The third group, it's a bit more tricky, of course, as usual, because we're talking about irregular verbs, okay? But still, I took this lire. Lire is to read, okay? And then you can see that it's ending with this, uh, so the vowel, uh, okay? As usual, what we'll do? We'll take this uh away. So we get now L-E-R. And after that, 
we just put the ending. Je lirai. All right? So it will apply for most of the verbs. Of course, because it's French language, it's not all the verbs. We've got exceptions, but we'll see the exceptions a bit later in this lesson. But still, that's the, that's the idea of uh, constructing it. If it's ending with this uh, vowel, take it away. All right? You get that. And after that, you just put the ending. All right? So let's see. The ending for je will be ai. All right, and you pronounce it a. Remember, open a. Okay. The ending for tu will be as. You don't pronounce the s, so you pronounce a. All right. The ending for il l will be a. Okay. Phonetically, exactly the same thing as for tu. Okay. A, a. The ending for nu will be o n s. As usual, okay, remember, you don't pronounce the final S, you get the on sound, okay, nasal in your nose, on, on, all right. The ending for vous will be, as usual, a Z, but then you pronounce it E, okay, and then the ending for il, l will be O, N, T, you don't pronounce the final T, so you get the nasal on, all right, so E, A, a, on, e, on. Okay? So let's see how it will go with parler, parler, to speak, to talk. Okay? Je parlerai. Tu parleras. Il parlera. Elle parlera. Nous parlerons. Vous parlerez. Ils parleront. Elles parleront. All right? So as I said, just keep your basic form and just put your endings. Okay? E, A, A, ON, E, ON. That's it. Let's see now. Choisir, to choose. Second group of verbs. Je choisirai. Tu choisiras. Il choisira. Elle choisira. Nous choisirons. Vous choisirez. Ils choisiront. Elles choisiront. Same thing, remember, just keep the infinitive form, the basic form, and just, just put your endings at the end. <laughs> e, a, a, on, e, on. Okay? Let's see now. Écrire, écrire is to write. Okay, so third group, but then remember, as we saw with lire, lire, we took away this final e, uh, okay? And only with the first part, we just add after that the endings. So, j'écrirai, tu écriras, il écrira, elle écrira, nous écrirons, vous écrirez, ils écriront, elles écriront. All right? So, it's not that difficult. Okay, as I said, you take away the E, uh, and after that, E, A, A, ON, E, ON. All right? So, of course, we've got some exceptions, as I said. The first one is être. Être will become sœur. So, the important thing with the future simple is that the verb will change, but the endings will be the same. Okay? So, the endings we saw previously will be exactly the same. Okay, so the only thing that you get to remember is that être will become sœur. So that's the part that you will first, you will have to put and then you will combine it with the ending and it will become je serai. Okay, remember ending for je was a i, je serai. Okay, avoir is becoming or. Okay, so tu aura. Aller will become ir. Il ira, elle ira. Faire will become fer, F-E-R. So you will get nous ferons. Savoir will become sort, S-A-U-R. 
Vous saurez. Voir will become vers. Ils verront. Elles verront. All right, so remember, être is becoming sœur. Avoir becomes or. Aller, ir. Faire, fer. Savoir, sort. Voir, vers. Okay, but then after all these forms, you will just put the normal endings that we saw previously. So, a, i for je, a, s for a, a, o, n, s, e, z, o, n, t. Other exceptions. Pouvoir will become pour. Je pourrais. Vouloir, voudre. Tu voudras. Pleuvoir, pleuvre. Il pleuvra. Devoir, d'œuvre. Nous devrons. Venir, viendre. Vous viendrez. Courir, cours. Ils, elles, courront. Ok? So, pouvoir is becoming pour. And it, mean, it means can. Vouloir, voudre. To want. Pleuvoir, to rain. Pleuvre. Devoir, to have to. D'oeuvre. Venir, to come. Viendre. Courir, to run. Cour. Ok? And then, as we saw previously, you only add after the endings. Alright, so remember one more time, je ending for je is ai, tu ending for tu is as, il, elle, a, nous, ons, vous, ez, il, elle, ont, okay, so e, a, a, on, e, on. Le pronom complément en. So let's see now. Um, we can use this uh, pronom complément en, whether with a, an article partitif, so this some concept, or then it can be an article indéfini, a. In English, it would be a, un, une. Or then it can be and the negative form, so that's what we'll see, and then we'll start first with l'article partitif, okay? So let's see now how we can make it. So if you have a question like, Nicolas mange du pain? So of course, first possibility that you would have to, you could have, would be to answer, oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So manger is to eat, du pain, some bread. Okay, in that case, that's really the partitive form. Okay, so you don't want to specify the quantity, but it's some. Okay, so of course, the first option that you would have would be to answer like that. Oui, Nicolas mange du pain. So you repeat everything. Normally, that's not the way we will do, because we tend to replace things with pronouns when it's possible. Okay, so the first option would be to replace Nicolas in that case. You don't want to repeat Nicolas, so you can say oui, il, he, uh, instead of Nicolas because it's masculine, mange du pain. So that's the first step. Okay, the second step, you want to replace this du pain. Okay, so this partitive thing. And that's when this pronoun en is used. All right? So, oui, il, en, mange. Okay? So, in that case, you use this il just to avoid repeating Nicolas because it was previously stated. And then, you want to use this en, the pronoun, just to avoid repeating du pain because it was in the question. Okay? Oui, il en mange. So, remember that this en pronoun should be before the verb. Okay? 
So let's see now. Another example. In the first example, we had the masculine form, and now I wrote same sentence, but then here we've got de la salade. Okay, salade is feminine word, so in that case it's not du, but then it's de la. Okay, but still it's the partitive form, some. Okay, Nicolas mange de la salade. Okay, so as we saw, first option would be oui, Nicolas mange de la salade. So you repeat the whole sentence. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il mange de la salade. Okay, and the last option, you don't want to repeat either Nicolas nor uh, de la salade. So you get oui, il en mange. Okay, let's see now if you get de l'eau. Nicolas boit de l'eau. Oui, Nicolas boit de l'eau. Second option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il boit de l'eau. Third option, will, sorry, oui, il en boit. Okay, same rule, en goes before the verb. Boire, here, it's the, the infinitive form is boire and it's to drink. Okay, de l'eau, some water. D'accord? Okay, let's continue now. Second structure. If you want to use the pronoun en instead of an article indéfini. So let's see how it goes. In that case, you know, you've got a question. Nicolas mange un biscuit. So it's quite interesting because the difference between what we had previously with the, the, this partitif, some, uh, when you use this partitif form, you don't really um, give any information regarding the quantity. In that case, you use un, so that's clear, it's only one. Okay, Nicolas mange un biscuit. First answer, oui, Nicolas mange un biscuit. Same thing as previously, you just put everything again. Second possibility, you don't want to repeat Nicolas. Oui, il mange un biscuit. All right. Last option, you don't want to repeat Nicolas and you don't want to repeat biscuit. Okay, the, the difference here between what we saw with the partitif and now is that you've got the here you've got the quantity so you know exactly how many or how much okay so you get to put that at the end of your sentence oui il en so you put your pronoun here before the verb and after that you put un il en mange un all right so let's see now if it's Feminine. Une banane. Nicolas mange une banane. Answer. Oui. Nicolas mange une banane. Oui. Il mange une banane. Oui. Il en mange une. Okay, so the information that you get now is that you will have to put the masculine or the feminine form after. Okay, here you put une. Because banana is a feminine word. All right? So let's see now. Nicolas mange des céréales. So here we've got the plural form. Oui, Nicolas mange des céréales. Oui, il mange des céréales. Oui, il en mange. All right? So basically when you get the plural form for des céréales here, you don't put anything after your verb. All right, so when you use this article indéfini, you will only need to put something after your verb if it's un or une, or then in other cases, but we will come to that a bit later, okay? So let's see now la forme négative. Nicolas ne mange pas de céréales. Okay, so you get the question, but here you've got the ne and then the pas, so you know that it's negative. Nicolas ne boit pas d'eau. So let's see the, the answers. Non, il n'en mange pas. Non, il n'en boit pas. Okay, so the concept is still the same. You put your pronoun here and here before your verb. And then, as usual in French, normally you should have your ne coming here, but then 
look, the pronoun is starting, is starting with a vowel, starting with a, okay, so you should take this a away, all right, il n'en mange pas, il n'en boit pas, all right, and then le pronoun en, well, it can replace the preposition de plus a noun, and especially a noun for a thing. Okay, so let's see now. Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Okay, est-ce que Frédéric est content? Content is to be happy, satisfied, okay, de son nouvel new ordinateur, computer. D'accord? Est-ce que Frédéric est content de son nouvel ordinateur? Alright, so it's exactly the same concept. You could answer, I mean, you could make a, a long, long answer uh, reusing every, every uh, object or everything in the, the, the question. But then, in that case, we'll try to go a bit faster. And so we don't want, of course, to repeat de son nouvel ordinateur here. Okay, so the concept is that we will use this pronoun en instead. Oui, il en est content. All right, so en, same thing here, before the verb. And then after that, of course, you continue your sentence because satisfied should be in the answer. Okay, so oui, il en est content. Negative form, non, il n'en est pas content. So, same thing, en stays before the verb, and then you get the first part of the negation, ne, but then e is going away. Alright? Oui, il en est content. Non, il n'en est pas content. Est-ce que Frédéric parle de son chef? Oui, il en parle. No, il n'en parle pas. Okay, so same thing, same concept. Just put it before the verb. Okay, when you get the negative form, then you should take this e uh, away from the first part of your negative form. Il n'en parle pas. Est-ce que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Okay, avoir besoin, it's to need. Okay. Notre aide, our help. Est-ce que, est que Frédéric a besoin de notre aide? Same thing here. We don't want to repeat de notre aide. So, oui, il en a besoin. Non, il n'en a pas besoin. Alright? And now, let's see how it goes when you... Constructed with one verb, avec un verbe, with two verbs, with two verbs, avec deux verbes. And then if you construct it with one verb composed, like for the passé composé, for instance. So let's see now, avec un verbe, with one verb. So you've got a question. Laurent prend un biscuit. Oui, il en prend un. Non, il n'en prend pas. So remember, we saw that previously, huh? if you get un biscuit, in that case you get to state the amount here, un, okay, so in that case it's masculine, un biscuit, so it's un, oui, il en prend un, okay, so you put un before the first verb, non, il n'en prend pas. Laurent prend deux biscuits, oui, il en prend deux. Okay, so in that case, you get to put the amount. Il en prend deux. So it would be the same if, we, if you would have trois biscuits, three. In that case, you would put, oui, il en prend trois. But then keep in mind that if you put the negative uh, answer, non, il n'en prend pas. So you don't need to state uh, the amount, okay? Il n'en prend pas. Now, we'll see the same structures, but with two verbs. And so... The best way to construct with two verbs, if you want to make examples like that, is to construct that with the near future. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Is going to take a biscuit. Laurent va prendre un biscuit. Oui, 
il va en prendre un. So the interesting thing here is that if you look carefully, you've got first aller here. So the first verb is here. And then you've got the second verb here. So it's at the infinitive form because that's the rule in French. When you construct with two verbs, the second one will be at the infinitive. And keep in mind that your pronoun, en, here, should be before the second verb. Okay? So I'm not going to tell you that it should be between the two because you could have other things between the two. Okay? It should be before the second verb. Oui, il va en prendre un. Okay? And you've got a good example here for the reason why I told you it should be before. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Alright? Because here you've got your aller verb, va, but then you've got the negative form, ne va pas. But then your pronoun should be before the second one. Okay? Il ne va pas en prendre. Let's see now. Laurent va prendre deux biscuits. Answer. Oui, il va en prendre deux. Non, il ne va pas en prendre. Okay? So let's see now when you've got a composed verb. So, we just need to put the same sentence at the passé composé form. Laurent a pris un biscuit. Oui, il a on a pris un. Okay? So, the important thing now is to try to remember that when you've got this form, a pris, even if you've got two parts, well, technically you don't have two verbs, you've got one verb. Okay? So, your pronoun, en, should be before the verb, so it means before a here. Okay? One common mistake is to put this en between the two. Okay? Because you tend to think that maybe you get two verbs, but no, 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 no. It's here, okay? Il en a pris un. Negative form. Il n'en a pas pris. Alright? Non, il n'en a pas pris. Laurent a pris deux biscuits. Oui, il en a pris deux. Non, il n'en a pas pris. Le pronom complément Y. So in the previous lesson we saw another pronoun. So it's uh, the pronoun uh, en, okay? And in that case, in this lesson we'll see le pronom Y. Well, you pronounce it I, of course. So le pronom Y, we'll see that it can replace un lieu, a place, okay? Or then it can replace la préposition a and then a noun of thing. And then we'll see how to construct it when you get a negative form, okay? So let's see now for a place, un lieu. So let's see a question. Isabelle va en Finlande. So va, remember, it's aller, okay? And then en Finlande, in Finland. Isabelle va en Finlande. So, of course, you will have many options to answer to this question. The first one would be maybe the more logical. Oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. So, you just take all the elements that you had in the question and then you answer with that. Of course, in many situations, we won't because French people like to use pronouns when it's possible. So, the first option that we would have is to uh, avoid repeating Isabelle, okay? So, elle va en Finlande, all right? And the other option we would have would be to avoid repeating this en Finlande, okay? So, it's a place, it's a country, okay? And in that case, it does mean that it would be possible to use this Y, so I, you pronounce it I, okay? So, oui, elle, I, va. So keep in mind that it's a pronoun and then it should be here just before your verb. Okay? Elle, y va. Alright, so, oui, Isabelle va en Finlande. Oui, elle va en Finlande. Oui, elle y va. Okay, so let's see another example now. So if you're 
using a name of a town because previously we had a country and now it's a town, so it's Paris, okay? Isabelle va à Paris? So it's a question. Of course, you can answer like we saw previously. Oui, Isabelle va à Paris. First option, repeat everything, no problem. Second option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle. Oui, elle va à Paris. And then, last option, you just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and then Paris. Oui, elle y va. All right? And now, it's a place. Cinéma. Okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Repeat everything. Second one, you just don't want to repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle est au cinéma. All right? Third one, just want to avoid repeating Isabelle and au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. All right? Oui, Isabelle est au cinéma. Oui, elle est au cinéma. Oui, elle y est. Second situation when we can use this pronoun I or Y, it's when you replace it. When you replace this preposition A and then a noun of thing. Let's see now. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense, pense is to think, à son examen, exam, okay, to think about. Est-ce qu'Isabelle pense à son examen? First option, repeat everything. Oui, Isabelle pense à son examen. Second option, you just don't repeat Isabelle. Oui, elle pense à son examen. Third option, you don't repeat Isabelle. And same thing for à son examen. So, oui, elle y pense. All right? Same concept, remember, y should come before the verb. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis. So in that case, remember, it's O, but then O is clearly the combination of the preposition A and then the article LE tennis, THE, okay? So when you combine these two, you get this O tennis. So still, it does give you the information that it is the preposition which is modified. So still, it's possible to use this pronoun Oui, Isabelle joue au tennis. Repeat everything. Second one, oui, elle joue au tennis. And the last one, oui, elle y joue. All right? So you can see that it's, it's, it's quite short. It's quite short, but it's quite useful because you don't need to repeat all the things that were stated in the, in the question. Okay? So remember, as usual, the pronoun should come before the verb, all right? So now we'll see how to construct these sentences with the pronoun Y, but then when you're using this negative form, okay? Est-ce qu'ils a... Sorry. Est-ce qu'Isabelle joue au tennis? First option. Oui, elle y joue. Second. Non, elle n'y joue pas. All right? So... Negative form should be before the pronoun here, okay? And then, as usual, remember the n followed by a vowel. They don't really get along, so a uh, should go away. So you take it away and you get ni, joue, and after the verb, you put your pa form, okay? Isabelle est au cinéma? Oui. Elle y est? Non. Elle n'y est pas. Same thing, okay? Negation here before your pronoun, but then E uh, is going away, and then pas after your verb. Okay, so let's see now how you construct it with one verb. Alexandre va au concert? Oui, il y va. Non, il n'y va pas. Okay, so no changes from what we saw previously. Okay, so before your verb, and then here, when you get the negative form, your ne is coming before the pronoun, and then your pa is coming after your verb. Okay? When you get two verbs now. Alexandre va aller au concert? So it looks a bit strange. Sorry about that. He's going to go at the concert. I know. <laughs> I know, but it's just just to show you how it works and I don't want to, to, to change the, the sentence, okay? So, 
Oui, il va y aller. Okay, so you can see here now that this pronoun I should be before the second verb. Okay, il va y aller. Negative form, no. Il ne va pas. Okay, so your negative form is before and after the first verb. And that's the key thing. Okay, and then your pronoun is coming after, uh, before, sorry, your, your second verb. Okay, so your pronoun E should be always before your second verb. Okay, and now let's see how it will work if we've got compo compost tense like uh, tense like um, aller here and it's at the passé composé form. So Alexandre est allé au concert. Okay, it's the past tense. Oui, il y est allé. Okay, so keep in mind that even if you've got two parts here, okay, it's only one verb. Huh? It's the verb aller at the passé composé. Okay, so it's composed. So you've got two elements, but still it's one verb. So it means that your pronoun Y should be before. Il y est allé. All right, and then the tricky thing, normally it's the negative form at the passé composé. Look, non. Il. So you put first the negative part. So ne. Obviously, this e uh, is going away because you've got a vowel, okay, as usual. Il ni e. And then you put, as we saw previously in uh, unit 5, or I don't remember, I guess it was unit 5 when I introduced the passé composé. You put this pa here between être and your participle passive form, okay? So, non, il, ni, est, pas, aller. Alright?